Hello everybody, video here for you today. Programming note, I will be doing a Curse of Oak Island full season 9 so far. No cap recap live tomorrow on Saturday, January 22nd, 2022 at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm hoping to interact with other Oak Island slash history nerds to see what questions and theories you might have. If you can't make the live stream, email those questions and theories to me at coachstevemoney at gmail.com and I will cover them during the stream. I'll start with a brief history of the discovery of the Money Pit and some of the major finds over the 225 plus year history of the treasure and history search. Like all my live streams, this will be available to watch after the fact as well. Sorry for the delay on this. I'll try to get these out faster going forward. Beyond Oak Island is a show in which the History Channel and Rick and Marley Nagina get involved with other treasure mysteries. This is the no-cap recap of the January 18th, 2022, Season 2, Episode 3 of the Beyond Island episode called The Buried Loot of Sam Bass. If you missed any of my recaps of The Curse of Oak Island or Beyond Oak Island, there's a link to the playlist in the upper right. Let's get into it. In the Oak Island War Room, hosts Matty Blake and brothers Marty and Rick Lagino discuss the allure of a lost treasure story, especially when it's associated with a larger-than-life figure from history, including the outlaws of the Old West. They discuss that uh, gold coins were often stolen, and because they were so heavy in bunches, robbers would often hide them not too far from the crime site and plan to return later to retrieve them. Indiana native Sam Bass went to Texas at the age of 18 with plans of being a rancher. He had had success with horse racing and transitioned to herding cattle. The hard labor and meager pay eventually led to him choosing a life of crime instead. He and his gang started with robbing stagecoaches, but Sam decided that robbing trains would be better. On the evening of September 18, 1877, right after the train pulled into the Union Pacific Station in Big Springs, Nebraska, they disabled the station's telegraph and went on board. They could not open the safe due to a time lock, but there were three boxes next to it full of freshly minted $20 gold coins. They escaped with $60,000 worth, which today would be around $6 million due to their history and not having been circulated. They were pursued, so the group split up the coins and separated, with Sam returning to Texas. Smart enough to not start spending the coins, he buried them, and legend says there were four different caches. With every subsequent robbery, he would add loot to one or more of the caches. Via video conferencing, the guys meet with historian treasure hunter Donna McCauley and metal detection expert Gypsy Jewels. The pair met through a mutual friend. Donna used her father's metal detector to find old coins and started collecting and eventually became interested in Sam Bass. The new owner of the land where a known hideout exists has given them permission to metal detect. A second location they are interested in is at the base of East Mountain, where a house was built on top of an old well. Three days later, Maddie Blake meets Donna and Gypsy at the Texas Rangers Museum in Waco, Texas. After fa failing to capture Sam Bass, the Texas Rangers arrested the father of a Sam Bass gang member. The gang member told them the details of the next planned robbery in order to get his father released. That led to a shootout, and Bass was hit near the base of the spine. He got away, but could not ride with his injury, and was found the next day, and died shortly thereafter. No gold coins were found on him or in his saddlebags. Another newspaper reported that his last words were, I'm going to hell, but it's not my profession to tell. Apparently not on display, the museum has a gold coin that Sam Bass spent in a saloon. The coin was donated to the museum 50 years ago. The coins became a problem for Sam because they were easily identifiable by the S of the San Francisco Mint. Later that afternoon, they begin metal detecting at a known hideout location in Springtown, Texas. They quickly find this suspected 1800 saddle button. 
and this piece of a shovel with hand forge rivets, also indicative of the time period. Next, they relocate to a nearby spring on the property. It is covered with metal doors for an unspecified reason. They get a big hit under this ridge, but it's buried too deep to be picked up by the pinpointer detector. They will have to come back with a pump to drain the water and heavy equipment to move the boulders, which even in Texas, even on private land, requires a government permit. The trio go to the second location north of Fort Worth, Texas, shown here. This is the house built on top of the old well with the East Mountain behind it. The house has never been metal detected. An old newspaper recounts an eyewitness saying that he saw Bass and his men hiding $60,000 worth of gold on East Mountain. They start on the mountain. It's a known rattlesnake area, so Maddie and presumably the Kramer crew are keeping an eye out. They get a hit. But it's a penny that has Abraham Lincoln on it, so the earliest it could be is around 1909. They relocate to inside the house to check the well. Maddie finds the place stones of the well inside. He also sees a small opening that leads to a more open area. They explore it with a bore camera capable of HD images up to 100 feet underground. After seeing some targets with the camera, Gypsy decides to crawl into it and probe with the pinpointer. She finds what they think is the top of a hand-hewn nail, but gets no other hits in the very small area she can reach with the pinpointer. They will have to come back after it is dug out more. One week later, back in the Oak Island War Room, Maddie shows Marty and Rick what they found. The brothers agree that there is enough evidence to warrant searching both locations further with more equipment. Next time on an all-new episode of Beyond Oak Island, right after a new curse episode called The Silver Liner, the 1715 Treasure Fleet Part 2 has the following synopsis. Matty Blake heads back to Florida's famed Treasure Coast to team up with professional treasure salvager John Brandon and his team as they dive on the wrecks of the famed 1715 Spanish Treasure Fleet. I'll be back next week to recap that episode, and a link to it will be in the upper right of this video once I upload it. Once again, a reminder for tomorrow's live stream at 2 p.m. Saturday, January 22nd of The Curse of Oak Island, full season 9 so far, no cap recap. I'm hoping to interact with other Oak Island slash history nerds to see what questions and theories you might have. If you can't make the live stream, email those questions and theories to me at coachstevemoney at gmail.com and I'll cover them in the stream. I'll start with a brief history of the discovery of the Money Pit and some of the major finds over the 225 plus year history of the Treasure and History Search. Like all my live streams, this will be available to watch after the fact as well. Thank you so much for your support. Thanks for watching.